Mr. Stokowski, music lovers in this country know you, of course, as the world-famous American conductor, but I don't think everybody realises that, that you're a Londoner by birth. And oh, oh, yes. Yes? I was born in St. John's Wood. I think it was in Abbey Road. I, I go there sometimes to try to find the house. It's so long ago, uh, and I remember in those days, St. John's Wood was mainly woods and trees and a few houses. Mm. Now it's uh, uh, mainly houses and a very few trees. And I, I'm not sure which house it is. I, I wish I could remember, but I cannot. It's so long ago. Do you, do you remember studying at the uh, Royal College? Oh, of and, course. Uh, and yeah. Queen's College, Oxford, too, wasn't it? That's right, yes. yes. And I go back to Queen's sometimes, to meet the, particularly the provost. Mm. He's an extraordinary man, Lord Florin. He's from Australia and a great scientist. Mm. I think he is the head of the Royal Society in London someplace. Mm. I'm not quite sure about that, but anyway, a man with an extraordinary mind. Mm. And I just like to talk to him because I don't have much mind and I admire, mm. admire people who do have minds and I like to listen. Mm. By the way, I think listening is uh, something we don't do much today. Everybody talks much. But uh, I remember that Napoleon was a great listener and that was one of his best attributes, although he had some very bad ones too, and also good, because I think it was he who formed or inspired the Code Napoleon, uh, which is much in England and America now in the law, and it was he who inspired that canal system which goes all over France, Belgium, Holland, etc. It was he who had the vision for that great street that goes to the Arc de Triomphe, the Champs Elysees. Uh, he was a great, wonderful, and horrible man, all in one skin. Mm. Um, talking about listening, uh, it's a coincidence that I've just heard a tape recording. Uh, the uh, pirated tape recording of a performance of Mahler's Eighth Symphony who gave in New York the Carnegie Hall in 1951 and uh, if I may say so quite honestly I think it was a tremendous experience and uh, I never heard such a great performance of it before. Of course you conducted the first performance of it in America. Yes that was a long long time ago and when I was a student in München I heard Mahler conduct it the very sure. first performance of all and, and the rehearsals and during the rehearsals he was changing and changing. He practically composed it in, or recomposed it, in the rehearsals. Mm. And much to the annoyance of the players in the orchestra, because he would stop them and take the part and write it another way and mm. rehearse them in the new way. Mm. They didn't like that very much, but the results were inspired and, in my opinion, one of the greatest compositions of the 20th century. Have you, are you still a great admirer of Mahler's music? Oh, yes, mm. uh, particularly the eighth and the second. And the second, uh, which you did here at the proms two years ago. Yeah, I think I did. Performance. Yeah, I did, I remember. Yeah. And uh, the chorus was glorious. It was really a wonderful chorus. Mm. And so was the orchestra. I think it was the London Symphony Orchestra. It might have been the... The maybe, London Symphony, yes. Was it the London, London Symphony, Symphony yes. Orchestra, yes. Anyway, the performance was a great joy to me. Mm. Of course, you've got an extraordinarily wide taste in music. Um, I think, uh, you know, you ma you've made your widest impact through those films like A Hundred Men and a Girl and Fantasia, but I don't think everybody realises in this country, although they know of you uh, as a great, famous world conductor, they don't realise that you've been a protagonist for all kinds of modern music. This Nielsen, for example, uh, which, uh, is, which you're doing on this occasion, I'm very interested in this. What do you think of his music? And what do you think of this particular strange Sixth Symphony? Uh, I believe I understand it technically. Mm. And I'm quite sure I do not understand it in a, in a deeper way. Mm. So I cannot give you a very good answer. I feel that it is something very unusual. It's the expression of the inner life of Nielsen, 
is sometimes with caustic humor. But I would like to study it more and conduct it more often to understand its inner nature, the mental part, the spiritual part, the psychological part. Mm -hmm. Technically, I know it, but otherwise, I must confess, I don't feel I do know it well. Do you know uh, Nielsen's other symphonies well? Oh, yes. yes. I know the, the, the second, the third, for example. Yes, but but there's a small composition of Nielsen called, I think, Saga Dream. Dream, Saga Dream in, yes. in English. Yes, that, I think, is a wonderful composition. Yes. Very short, but it really expresses something in a remarkable way. Something, in a way, like some of the smaller compositions of... Uh, the great Finland and Finlandia composer. Mm. That that same kind of northern feeling. Sibelius. Sibelius. You're yeah. also an admirer of Sibelius. Oh right? great. Well we were friends too. Oh you knew Sibelius? Oh I knew him very well. I used to visit him, yes. And uh, used to listen to him. He was a most interesting man in conversation as well as, as a great composer. Mm. A very inspired composer, in my opinion. Mm. He composed from the heart, just like Tchaikovsky did, mm. like Beethoven did, like Mozart did, mm. like Bach did. Mm. Of course, you've also done a lot of the, uh, what are the, we call the new music of our time, Schoenberg, Stravinsky. Somebody told me uh, that you were the one, you are the one conductor who uh, presented all Schoenberg's orchestral works in his own lifetime. That's true. Just well, he and I were friends, <clears throat> you see, but it wasn't because we were friends. I have friends who are composers, but I never conduct their music because I don't think it's inspired. I, I don't understand it. It seems like paper, what I call paper music. It notes on paper, mm. but it doesn't express something. But uh, with Schoenberg, that was different. This was an extraordinary man, and uh, because I so much admired the music that was always experimental with him, he was always going into new directions in the, the growth of music, because music is always evolving, like everything in this universe is evolving all the time, all the planets and stars and space and everything. So was this man. And uh, that was why we performed everything during his lifetime. Uh, does your interest in the new evolution of music extend to the very new music we're getting? Oh, yes. Like Boulez, are you interested in oh, that? Oh, very the much so, yes. You see, we, we must not permit anything to happen that stops the evolution and the experimentation into new directions, because time will take care of it in any case. If it has true inspiration, if it is a true expression of the poetry of life in some form, whatever, it will live. If not, it will not. So time takes care of it. I think uh, we should not be so careful to try to stop such developments. Let them happen they will take care of themselves. Mr. Stokowski, thank you very much. It was a pleasure.